Hey, and welcome. Today I wanted to share with you what the Bible says about spiritual gifts. And there's a lot of things that we could get into, but I want to keep this fairly brief. So if you have questions, you can put those in the comments and I'll do my best to answer as best as I can or to research those and get back to you. The Bible mainly talks about spiritual gifts in three main passages, in 1 Corinthians 12, in Romans 12, and then in Ephesians 4. And spiritual gifts are different than natural talents. With natural talents like singing and painting and things like that, they differ from spiritual gifts. So like God will give spiritual gifts to Christians to help them do things that all Christians are supposed to do. So like evangelizing, giving, having faith. But God will give a particular spiritual gift or more to a Christian and they will excel in that and that will come more easy to them than other Christians. And so that's just their their area of strength. And as Christians, we have different areas of strength. And the reason why God gives us these spiritual gifts is for the advancement and the building up of the church. So Ephesians 4, 11 through 13 says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers, and there's a lot more spiritual, spiritual gifts, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So these spiritual gifts that God gives us, they are supposed to help us serve and build up the church so that we can all help each other and we can grow and we can help each other to mature and to become more Christ-like and to help bring the world to Christ. And so I, for all my classes, we've been reading this book called Unwrap Your Spiritual Gifts by Kenneth Gangle. And it's really good. It goes through all the spiritual gifts and helps explain them and has really helped me understand them. And I wish I could explain all of them to you, but that would take a long time. So instead, I'm going to kind of go through the list that they go through in the book just so you know, like, what the different ones are. And then if you have questions, ask or research on your own some. But the spiritual gifts would be administration, so like organizing and supervising leadership, apostleship, which often is what like church planning missionaries have, like Paul. Um, There's evangelism, explaining and sharing the gospel and reaching the lost. There's exhortation, which is encouraging, challenging, and comforting people. Prophecy, which is proclaiming the word of God. Tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. Knowledge, which is understanding God's truth and his work in the world. Wisdom, which is problem solving, making wise decisions, having godly insight. Pastoring, which is when a believer who is spiritually mature shepherds and watches over fellow believers of lesser spiritual maturity. Teaching, explaining God's truth and how to apply it. Faith, which is utter dependence on the Lord. And it's when you can genuinely trust God even when there is no natural or human reason to trust God. Giving, so being generous with your time, resources, and being self-sacrificing. Ministering, which is serving and helping and enjoying meeting people's needs or easing their burdens. Discernment, so knowing the difference between what's true and what's not and how God, being able to sense how God's spirit is working among people. Mercy, Pity for those who are in in misery and having personal ministry for the sick and the afflicted. Hospitality, enjoying making people feel welcome and comfortable. And then healings and miracles. So that's a lot. And I would challenge you to narrow down on what you think is your top spiritual gift or maybe even two. You can do that by taking a spiritual gifts test. We've done that here at KMBC. And so I'm going to put a link in the description in, to a spiritual gifts test that you can take. But I would challenge you to narrow down on a gift that you, th- that you believe you have. 
and then to study that gift really thoroughly and try and understand it as much as you can. And then look for ways that you can use it to bless other people. And look for ways that you can develop it, that you can get better at it. So that's my challenge for you this week. And that's just a very brief like look at spiritual gifts. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this day. And I ask that you'd be with this person, that you would help them to see the gifts that you would have given them and how they can use those to glorify you and to just discern their calling upon their life, your li- their life and your will for them. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Well, again, if you have any co- comments or questions, feel free to ask those below. And until then, I'll see you next week.